Welcome to the XSF Podcast, hosted by Devante and Lou. This is the Fuego. podcast to show that every human is capable of being extreme. Tune in to discover how you are too. How do you like to? So, how do you like to take, creating content there? Um, like, like, let me ask you something. Is it is because I see like your thing you do. You're doing the podcasting now, right? Um, By, I, I took a little break from it, but I need to. I'm restarting it uh, this month. Okay. And how do you? So shout out. Go check out by by product performance yeah. podcast right or is that what appreciate okay. how do you get how'd you get into that in how'd you get into um well basically um so as far as the podcasting side of it like i started just coming on as a guest like i am right now with a bunch of other people's podcasts and i yep. recognized the value that it gave me it was kind of that like refuel and recharge to be able to talk to people in the industry you know about fitness things about life um and through that recognition of like hey i've feel better whenever I do these and like it's better connecting with people that I'm not seeing um, so often. And so eventually it got to the point of it was like, well, right now I'm just limited on going on to people's podcasts and there's a lot of people I want to talk to that don't have podcasts. So I was like, well, looks like I have to have a podcast now. Um, So I kicked the, I actually kicked it off with a trip to out to Ohio. I stopped in uh, St. Louis and met with Matt Vincent and did podcast in his studio. Uh, Went out to um, London, Ohio to Elite FTS. Met Sam for the first time in person. Um, We trained that weekend and that Sunday did a podcast. So the first two guests were Matt Vincent, Sam Brown, and just kind of ran from that for a little bit. And then Go. Um, got rolling for a bit, uh, had to stop for a bit with just how crazy and hectic schedules get. Um, but yeah, relaunching it, but that's really what, what got me started into it was just recognizing the value of those conversations and realizing that like, it's way easier if you just have your own, be like, Hey, you want to come on instead of just like, Hey, we should talk, but you don't have a podcast. I don't have a podcast. So I don't have a solution. Yeah. yeah. It is, it is, yeah, no. it is pretty dope. Like podcasting in general. Like I noticed that being home from uh, work that I'm doing it more and like just conversations in general, when you get into really deep and it doesn't have to be about metaphysical things. It could be about anything, but you go deep skateboarding. When me and Devani go deep into skateboarding, I'm like, why don't we just record this? You know what I mean? Like, because you know, it is like people, cause people be like, Oh, why don't you just have a conversation with people? You could, that's great. I'm all for that. But now this shows other people to have conversations and maybe other people like what we're talking about to have other people on. And it's an amazing thing to uh, also what your thoughts are going through to like bounce them with other people, be like a little tennis match. You know what I mean? And to me, that's how you get better at things. Obviously, you know, if we sit down and talk about fitness together, I'll learn from you. You learn from me. You know, it's a, it's a, that's what I love about podcasting. It's just people talking to people, you know, it's, open conversation yeah it's exactly it's that. like you have that readily available soundboard from the person that you're talking to that you know you can you get into conversations that you're not openly having on the regular and so it's real time figuring it out but it's also like mm-hmm. it's also getting to talk to somebody like just about something they're passionate about like it's fun to talk to people about something they're passionate about it doesn't really matter what that passion is but being able to feel somebody's energy on the passion and just hear their thoughts on why they're passionate about what they're passionate about it. Like that gets you passionate about, I don't, I don't know anything about skateboards, but let's talk about skateboards. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say that too, as you guys were talking, I was like, I think it's the, the passion we, we have going into the conversations we have, you know, and I think it's also, we're seeking, people out to have that with like you said there that's how you started your podcast i think that's i was going to ask you do you have a plan to do that off like when you were like i'm gonna start a podcast this is how i want to start it or is it just like kind of a fluke thing because i think that was a genius way to start to like get those names those are two big heavy hitters to start a podcast with like matt vincent and sam brown and then 
One thing before I forget, London, Ohio, you said, right? London? Yeah, that's where Elite is. Uh, it's right okay. next to uh, Columbus, Blew my mind. Ohio. Blew my mind. Blew my mind. See, another okay. thing that America has over England. We even took your name and made it better. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> um, so, like, it it actually wasn't wasn't my initial plan because, like, I I hate the technical side of this stuff. Like, so I tried to it's so long, man. <laughs> as long as I could until like it was no longer an option. And the funny, like the funny thing, honestly, how it came about. So I put out a uh, story. It was like, hey, who whose podcast should I go on? It was like, like I tag them that. and list them. Yep. And so like mm-hmm. got a bunch of them. Well, somebody tagged Matt and Matt replied to it. It, Cause I was like, yeah, I'd love to, like, I'd love to talk to Matt. I don't think like I'm there to go on his podcast, but like he's dope and maybe in the future. So Matt replied back to me and he was like, yeah, I'd love to come on your podcast. So instead of being like, I don't have a podcast, I was I like, well, with. looks like I have a podcast now. <laughs> That's amazing. And, like, I'd already, That's so dope. <laughs> I'd already had a uh, trip planned out to go to Ohio to um, meet Sam and train there and um, meet Dave. And so I was like, okay, well, it's, it's like a, you know, 45 minute dip from this straight shot to London. So let me just hit them up, see if uh, this week, like if that travel time works and just dipped in, hung out there for a while, trained, did a podcast, got back on the road and did the rest of the weekend in Ohio. Dude, that's talk about just life kind of setting itself up. Right. I think, I don't know. I'm, I'm a firm believer. Me and Lou talk about this all the time, but you know, things happen for the certain reasons they do at the certain times. And that sounds like one of those times for sure. Just like happened to be that way. And I love how you adapted to, and we're like, cause you easily could have been like, well, uh, I don't, I don't have a podcast, but could I uh, maybe get on yours? You know, like you were just like, all right, yeah, no, cool. Let's get it. Like here, well, I got the podcast. We're about to, we're about to become. Yeah. This. And that's tight. And man, the like funniest thing about that is, you know, I bought this, I don't know. I bought this whole like starter kit with headphones and microphone and like all the fancy shit, spent a couple hundred dollars on it. And like on that trip, it wasn't working. Um, luckily enough, about like right. the night before yeah, I was right. like, oh, I should probably have two microphones. There's no way I can go and get this like expensive one ass here in time again. So I went to Walmart, bought a $20 microphone and that's what I've been recording on since. I think it's been the, been the mm-hmm. lifesaver of it. That's literally, I have, I have the same thing. Like this is my first ever microphone from episode one till like probably more recently 30 or something like that. Like Diff. then you, you want to talk about my, I'll get you both be right now. I'm in Louis trust. The first 20, <laughs> the first 20 episodes were recorded with mics that didn't work, <laughs> that we didn't know they didn't work the whole They're time. Recorded on the laptop we, me and my time. brother were holding microphones like this, talking into them to find out that they never were recording. Oh, <laughs> and it was just us screaming. You know, so to this day, I use like the, that's funny you brought this up and I'm glad you did. Cause now I'm where the next thing I'm gonna ask you is what do you use? Cause I was just telling him like, yo, I really got to like step this up and, and get the mics because I was listening to re listen to some of our podcasts. I'm like, yeah, you could, it's a noticeable difference between how we sound, and I gotta really well, step that up. Well, that's also too because of this virtual thing, there's like that like Zoom call sound to it, like when, whenever you do this type of stuff. So, I mean, yeah, you like really you sound stuff. crisp, you sound crisp, and it's also I got that that voice, I got that, 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 that whiskey voice. voice. <laughs> Maybe I'll get some like oh. singing lessons or something. To try to no, soften you know, it's up my funny, voice. Actually, too. you brought that up, Lou. And I don't know if there, if you heard the episode, like when me and Lou partnered up and he came here for the first time and stuff, and we did a podcast and we thought the whole time, like we were talking into these microphones, like so confident, like we were talking into it. Now, I, hands down, one of our best podcasts. Yeah. Go back and listen to it if you haven't. And I'll put it in the show notes or because we were just gooning the whole time. But uh, all of a sudden, he's like, dude. Uh, I just realized we didn't record any of that on the microphone. It was like the laptop was like away from us on the table and it was just recording off the laptop the whole time. But that's just, it works out that way sometimes, you know? Yeah. It's, it's all about, I guess it's all about just getting it going. Exactly. It's, and then yeah, figuring it out in the way. Yeah, yeah. It's getting it going and it's yeah. like being willing to adapt to it. And like the, the biggest thing that I had conversations about on that first trip with those first two episodes was like, there's like having the availability um to meet like we are now like 
over like online and through the computer and everything like it's it's allowed a lot more opportunity for it but it's almost even propped up um propped up more the value of being in person like how much more it means now showing up and like making that trip and being able to do it in person i think think having that other option like it's helped a ton with convenience but it's also like helped um, prioritize the value of just in-person contact and conversations. Do you think it's um, no on that? Do you think it's also in like helped people reach out more than they usually would have by chance? You know, before we kind of got into this age of like the video podcasting or podcasting in general, do you think people maybe reached out as often as they do, or do you think they maybe reach out more, which is creating more of those chances for people to get together in person? Yeah, I think. I think like it's always been an option, but with like Mm -hmm. during these last two years, I think it really like just opened people's eyes or at least my eyes of like, Hey, this has always been an option that I haven't been using. It's like, you probably use this more. Um, And, you know, just, I think through that availability of like more convenient conversations, um, because what in the last five days I've probably been on, six to eight calls with people all around the country or like Mac in Australia um, that, that I think sets it up a lot more for, Hey, we can do these quicker, shorter, more convenient ones with a lot of times where like, if these are happening or like, if there's like that connection to prioritize doing in-person sessions, like me and uh, me and Sam just put this out last week. Like we're doing a um, seminar in Kansas City in January, at the end of January with a, another coach local, but like that wouldn't have happened without, um, you know, going through the connections of Prescript and then without the trip and then without like us recognizing like, mm-hmm. hey, let's do something together. Like it all came about through an online setting, but then getting in person, getting to meet, just kind of steamrolled that and um, kept them that momentum going. Yo, when in January is that? Uh, uh, January 30th. Is that? Oh, yeah. fantastic. All right, Lou, we've been, we've been taking a little trip. Yeah, because we're doing I'm a writing that uh, down right now. New Year's trip. Well, um, I mean, long term, that one might become a bit of a traveling one. So uh, this will be kind of the first, like, Working, working. Oh, so you mean like around the country, uh, like going to potentially? Or... Um, like we we've talked okay. about it a little bit, kind of seeing what the interest in because yeah. that one's a sensible sports performance seminar. So it's just the the three of us, and with that one and the setting of the gym, because uh, it's Kansas City mm-hmm. uh, strength and conditioning. It's more of a like baseball, softball specific focused gym. Um, so we're going in there to try to appeal more to coaches and athletes and um, and talk about biomechanics, fundamentals of performance training, um, kind of get that merger of a little bit lecture, a lot of hands-on um, application and like trying to individualize it to the group that there is there so they can best apply that back into their practice. That's amazing. So, it's when it comes to and that we've talked about this on like the last, po- last podcast I had you on like a little bit of your background, but uh, when you do these intensives and stuff, have you done anything like this before? I know like your background is like in the schooling like in like world, so is that kind of helping you progress more into doing this? Do you th- find it easier to do these type of things like get in front of people and explain things just because of the way you do it, or do you think it comes more from you know being the coach that you are? Um. Just on a consistent basis both to like give a general idea i think part of it is like yep. <laughs> like i enjoy same reason that we were just talking about with the podcast like i enjoy talking to people that have that passion and like get excited about this stuff and have questions and like we can we can look at like instead of just like a general textbook answer like if we're if i'm in person talking to you like I don't have to give this baseline answer. Like we can spend some time on this. We can deep dive it. We can like, we can get in application, actually do some of these things. And um, part of that, like in my profession, a lot of it is, has been training trainers. Like even as an, in undergrad, even in my master's, like 
one of my primary roles was training trainers, training group fitness instructors. And so teaching them how to do these things. And with that, you know, it just comes a natural like presentation, not as formal, like whole lectures or anything, but it's taking them through the steps Mm -hmm. is talking to talking to them about how to, um, how to like go about the procedures, how to perform exercise. Um, naturally that just kind of led into me wanting to present. And so looking at conferences and started, um, started pretty routinely, um, doing presentations and, um, alternating where like, there was a time where I was doing sort of like the, some specialty certifications or like online certifications, like probably two every six months for like a couple of years, just looking to expand knowledge and like find resources to start pulling from. Um, Because one of the other things I used to do is I would never give the same presentation twice. Like it was every time I presented, it was a different presentation at a different conference. So with that, like pushing myself to still like get new information, get some different thoughts, like expand on some different things. Um, But with those presentations, it just helped me expand to other audiences that I wasn't in person. So now I was traveling to um, start doing that. And through some of those connections of um, content, like my continued education, going to conferences, presenting, I met some people that um, helped me get in touch with uh, Ace Fitness. And so for a while, um, my first introduction to like long form um, presentations outside of work stuff that might have run four or five hours. Mm-hmm. Like my first eight hour presentation was or workshop, I guess, was uh, through a fitness as one of their master trainers um, and did that a couple a little bit. Okay. Um, then with everything again, the last two years kind of put everything on standstill um, and, and um for outside workshops, the prescript intensives kind of brought that back. And so like, since that look have got back into being able to present, getting back in person and just kind of reignited that, um, that fuel to make sure that I'm, um, taking advantage of those opportunities and seeking out some of those opportunities. That's amazing. And shout out to the prescript family. Always. Uh, you didn't know James, James is one of the prescript lab coaches and i've noticed that too like when you've been teaching you know well it's a little bit different than teaching when we're in those things right but just even when you're answering a question that somebody asked you can tell you have quite a bit of experience doing that and it shows so i think it's awesome just hear kind of where that comes from especially expanding your knowledge consistently like that's i think that's a key thing right there i love that yeah how, how did you even get hooked up with prescript um, how did this even come about yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so i can't believe i never asked that well so and just, like so anybody yeah. that doesn't know like that's how we know each other like all of us know each other through that prescript yeah. connection yeah. and just like how that community is expanded out and kind of spiraled into like so many different worldwide like that's exact same with me and sam brown like we knew each other for a year a year and a half through like screens until we finally got on person um so kind of like my uh the origin story of like me and uh prescript um when i was so whenever i was in uh grad school um seeking out like knowledge and information and like different resources. And it started with um, me listening to mind pump. Um, So mind pump radio. uh, And like, it's a it's a great resource for trainers, and especially new trainers just to get like, such a broad scope of different topics and conversations. Um, And shallow happened to be one of the guests. And um, like with my background of more like more geared tell towards performance and then a little bit of exposure of like movement and things like this. Um, like it just some of the things that he talked about on the podcast and um, the videos that came afterwards were just very, very practical. And I connected very early on with it. Um, so I think he was on there a couple of times and then, him and Jinta started up their podcast. So it's like, okay, cool. Like started listening to them, um, just started sharing it on my social media. And, um, and you know, that's kind of how like 
we just like through that social media connection, just like here and there, like, Hey, thanks for sharing it. It was like, no problem. Good content and whatnot. And then I think it was maybe 2017, uh, whenever I was working in Texas that, uh, shallow did a, um, free seminar at destination Dallas, uh, one of the big gyms down there. And I think it was like a three hour seminar, like free seminar, probably had 30 people show up. Um, and he did one hour on shoulders, one hour on hips, one hour on spine. And like, it was whiteboard, like kind of like he does like whiteboard, but then pull somebody up and like move their body around and stuff. Yep. <laughs> um, and so he just kind of went through that and like to the group in this small posing room in destination Dallas, answering questions and whatnot. And then afterwards, um, uh, like had a line of people that were going through and just like getting pictures with him, uh, like having small conversations. Um, and so something I've always done and held value to, uh, with presentations that if you connect with the presenter, um, wait around, even if it's just to tell them, Hey, I appreciate your presentation, like introduce yourself and, um, give yourself that opportunity to meet them. Um, by no means like by no means have the expectation that like we're going to dive into this long conversation because they probably have things to do. So be mindful and respectful of their time. But something I've always done is like, oh, I'm going to stand in the back of the line and at least like, hey, I dug the presentation like it was helpful information. Good to meet you. Um, so same thing. Did that with Shallow. Probably waited an hour, or a little bit more as like he just went through talking to everybody and whatnot. And um with the small group that i brought like a student and a co-worker um we went and we talked to him just our group probably for another hour and so that so i was like hey really good information but like even more so like he's a good dude like he he was willing to wait around to talk to everybody to you know do the like social media pictures that people do but but i was like yeah. he you know he just did three hours lecturing to a group just did a whole hour taking pictures and talking to people. And then like he, he was free enough with his time and, yes. um, and just had that conversation. And so made that connection, like that in-person connection, kept doing the social media thing. Um, there was one podcast that like, I was just kind of cracking up about because, uh, like they shouted me out on, um, on the radio. I was literally just gonna mention that that's how i found you there like literally that's how <laughs> i found you that's so funny you mentioned that i was thinking that this whole time i was like how did i yeah, yeah. so like they yeah. they uh made that shout out they're like yeah and james there from topeka kansas like always sharing yep. yeah. i was like i gotta check this dude out i was like okay, um, look at, look so yeah look. like after that one uh we just kind of connected a bit um and like in that time I forget the exact time frame, but somewhere in there, they started introducing the labs. So, um, mm -hmm. because PSL one started in 2019, if I remember right, cause it, I was like the first iteration of it. So started doing that, starting do started doing the like cert in the labs that came with it and on the labs, basically like sat there, listen, but my goal with these is always to like have conversations and like, not just like be somebody that's sitting there being lectured to, but like, Hey, let's dive into this. Let's break this down. And so what would happen sometimes is like, um, like Jordan, uh, or like shallow Jinta or Killian were on these labs. And I would notice sometimes like, because there, there's quite a diversity of trainers that come into like some of the prescript programs, um, mm -hmm. different knowledge base and everything like that. And so I would notice that like, Hey, sometimes like, People are like, what the fuck is he talking about? Um, <laughs> like, I just like reiterate of, of what I was hearing. I was like, so basically like this 10 minute conversation that they just had, like, these are the fine points to it. And like, try to make those mm -hmm. connections and connect those dots with people. Um, eventually that led to like them asking me to like jump on the podcast with them. Eventually that built into like joining the um labs and doing that for a while and that built up to um built up to uh like doing the intensives with them built up to me and mac building building out a uh, programming uh programming course so you know it's just like 
momentum really carries, man. Like as long as, as long as you stay active with it and like don't have the expectation it's going to happen by itself, but you actively pursue it, like that momentum just carries and you can build on it and it just, you never know where it's going to go, but as long as you follow, it's going to lead somewhere. Yo, you ever watch Chappelle's show? Um, it's been a minute, but I have. Yeah. Well, they have they have it on where like uh, he'd have the angrier gangster Barack Obama, and you're the opposite for prescript. You're the Buddha of after <laughs> Killian and Shallow are screaming about something. It's like Thayer, can you explain what I just yelled about for twenty minutes? And you come in, everyone's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> like that's what, that's what it would be like. That's exactly what I would say. Like when I'd be in those labs and Shallow or, or Killian about to. F- throw a laptop at somebody, you know, even going nuts. And then you just, it's like, there, can you just explain what I said? <laughs> and you come in as the peaceful Buddha with that barbell therapy of yours, that, like, that barbell poetry, Dude. son. <laughs> You're going to have to start these it. terms for me, Lou. Dude, I trademark it. Um, I got you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. You see what I did with the word yes? It's been around forever. Look. <laughs> you know what I mean? You won't hear that. I swear to God. <laughs> That word's been around forever, dude. Everybody knows <laughs> who's yes, that is. That's amazing. Come on, so I got you. Barbell poetry. Let it. Let someone else try it, okay? Let someone. You saw that one guy a while ago. He tried to come up on the comments with yes. <laughs> oh, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> you can't just say yes anymore. You know what I mean? You got to do. You got to give some respect now. Circa nah, 2021, Lou. I mean, you got to teach these kids. <laughs> but yeah, that it really is dope. Like, because as we're having this conversation right over the internet, Kansas, Minnesota would have never known. Like, because I have a lot of negative kind of you know thoughts of technology and stuff. But like you said earlier, and like we continue to touch on, is like what this does is opens up the avenue to to connect more when you use it properly. Because that's the social part of this media stuff, right? You know, when you utilize it, and I guess the, I don't want to say quote right or bad, but you know the quote right way. And like you said. It may, at least, like, for you, obviously, you just said it. For me also, it makes me want to go meet people in person more. Because, like, mm-hmm. when you, like, because I this is where it's funny, too, when I hear, like, people, like, you guys selves about talking about coming up. I'm like, damn, how old are you? You've been doing this for so long. Because in my, I just started this three years ago. I'm 32. Because my first, in my 20s, I did the opposite of building yourself up. You know what I mean? I tried to crash it down. So I'm always like, damn, how long have these people been doing this stuff? Like, oh, wait, Lou. People go to college and and learn after high school. They don't go the opposite route that you went. So it's like dope that online stuff like this can get you into the heads of other people that are like you or thinking like you or going down the avenues that you're going instead of like looking around the people around you like, oh, what am I going to do now? Like, I don't want to do what you guys have been doing. Mm -hmm. What do we do now? So now it's like, oh, now like I'm going to Miami this weekend to get into the heads of people like-minded like that again, going to Virginia, going to Minnesota, you know what I mean? Going to Kansas, you going to London, uh, Ohio, not England, you know, (laughs) awesome stuff like that. It's, and then eventually England, you know what I mean? The England crew's over there too. Like that's, what's dope again with that prescript community they're building is it's, uh, it, it, it's creating, for me, it's add like a pre-skip commercial to this. Yeah, thing. dude. It's, well, this is what that is. <laughs> it creates that just that community of like-minded. That like most of the conversations I have are on computer screens with people in Canada, Turkey, yep. Dubai. You know, it's not with someone in Manhattan. Yeah. You know what I mean? And eventually, um, like I've hung out with more people from New York because of pre-skip, you know, or from whatever online. And it's dope that that's what it does. It brings that uh the connections. Okay, I got a question now for you there. And Lou, you can answer this too. Uh, so as we're talking about this, we're always talking about like, like-minded individuals, right? Like finding those people who are uh, thinking the same way we're thinking or at least trying to grow and being growth-minded as well. Um, now, okay, we always search that out. Now, how do you feel about maybe finding people and having conversations where you know they might have the complete opposing view with you? I feel like that's something that's not searched out for. Um, it's needed through the social media thing. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like even me myself, I would want to get like more people on the podcast that might have a completely opposing view. Um, just because you have that out in the world, right? You go out and to the store or whatever, or something happens. You two people have different views, but um, when we're doing this, it just seems like I'm, I, I know me I have a bias toward you know reaching out to there, reaching out to Coach Thor, like I had on people who I can I know like relate mm-hmm. to things, but. 
wondering what you think. Yeah. So I think, you want to go I first? think it's crucial. Like if you want to be, mm-hmm. if you want to have conversations, if you, if you want to like approach something without a bias and like have a full understanding, it's crucial to have those conversations to like seek out opposing views to think, to it uh, yep. by having that, whether it's reading about it, whether it's having a conversation about it, it gives you context of when this can be right and when this can be wrong. And with that, you don't fall into the trap or the mindset of like, my way is the only way. It's, I mean, I, I think it's like in fitness, but multiple mediums that, that people can get so stuck and I've only done this system that this is the system and this is the only way to do the system. Whereas like, you know, it it can be the difference of like, whether it's how you should do this exercise or when to implement this exercise, expanding out into like, what's a focus of um, training or like different utilizations of, of implements or like even expanding like values, thoughts, um, how you present yourself, like all these things, like they, they can be interconnected where you can use a, a fitness as a starting point. What I've found is like through the passion and through the, the arena of fitness that gives us a connecting point that we can relate to, but it doesn't mean that like we're like-minded in all of our thoughts, all of our approaches to life. We just have this connecting point. And if we can find this middle ground to connect on, like it better facilitates conversations of differences through other mediums. Um, Because you, you have this connecting point back that like a connecting point of understanding, because that's the big thing is absolutely. You need to be critical with your thoughts. You need to put them out there that they're, you're willing to allow them to be exposed and be wrong or see when it's right and when it's wrong, no matter, again, no matter if it's just your like general thoughts on something or like thoughts on fitness, but having that sounding board is crucial. So you don't fall into that trap. Um, what I would also say with it is like, make sure whenever you're going around this, like you're finding people that are willing to have a conversation because it's, because if you run into somebody that has fallen into that trap, just recognize like when it's time to call it, because if you're going into a conversation to try to win it, like it's already lost, like be there that like, Hey, we can present different sides. If you bring up some relevant points, like I'm willing to move my thoughts on it or like adapt to that. But if it, it comes to a like point where like we're not having a conversation, we're just arguing the same points back and forth. Like it's lost. Okay. Like you have your thoughts, I have my thoughts. Let's move forward and let's go. Um, and like, you know, part of that, I think it was just inherently in me, partly inherently just like seeking out information that you had to see some objectivity in that. Um, and then really, um, really kind of curated through, um, through school because I started out like my, I always had that draw to like literature that's kind of the barbell poetry that's where like some of that influence comes from um and then like getting into college um my first undergrad was uh poli sci it, political science and a lot of that is philosophy based and the whole you know the whole point of philosophy is like looking at something and looking to just oppose it to like something else and like it's a whole thought process of this is what I think. Do I really think this? Like, here's something that could make it wrong. Here's something that could make it right. And just trying to like work through that like internal chess match of seeing like where we can move and where we can, uh, where we can present ideas or where we can, uh, like cultivate our, our thoughts on a subject. A lot of words, long conversation. Lou, add to that. I was lit. Well, I'm no, sorry. I was just going to say, though, that's, I was, I was I had 30 say, puppies like, come that's how here. you answer a question, though. Like, I don't know, because there's those, that was kind that's of why we have question. you on, honestly, because so, we like, could ask one question and you go for fucking a half hour. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's essentially like, yeah. just like <laughs> chaos in here that I just kind of like sort through. And, like, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. I love it, though. Dude, I mean, but I, I completely agree in the sense like the th- what I notice a lot in changing my whatever on uh 
basically judging less and just being able to see things more for what they are is like, the more like, we have to sit down with people that have opposing views because the more we could find our similarities, the less we'll look at each other as so different. Mm -hmm. But if we only look at the differences, like, oh, you're communist, I'm capitalist, can't talk to you. Like on In Louis Trust, I got some some plans to have some self proclaimed communists on because I really need to get down to the nitty gritty of what's going on with this. And I get it. You look at the society in America right now, it's so easy to take hold to the opposite of what you disagree with and the opposite of people that look like you, you know what or I mean? So it's like a side and not to, to like choose a side always. Yeah. So like, yeah. I think it's great to talk to people that are opposing views because a conversation, unless like you said, there is like, well, you could tell you get into a conversation with someone who just wants to win. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what do we, there's nothing to win here. So even, like, even debates aren't supposed to be won. They're supposed to be debated. When you put win around it, then people have this, they're connected to what they're about to say so much. If you say something different, emotions, feelings get involved instead of just this, this human connection. Mm -hmm. But when you can have those conversations with people that have opposing views and still jive and at the end, hey, it was great talking to you. Like, you just kind of became friends with someone who thinks opposite of you. Wow, look at that. We could live in harmony and think different. That's a beautiful thing without hating each other. And that's what I love about podcasts and shit and this stuff too. And the conversations is like, yeah, like invite it more. Like hopefully someone does hear this and they heard what we just said. And it's like, oh yeah, I got this idea. Right, Let's cool. talk about it. Let's you know what I mean? On. Cause that's how humans will be. I think better in the future is like, let's stop looking at all our differences and start looking at our similarities. We're all humans. We want food, shelter, water, and we want to help each other out for the most part. You know, mm -hmm. let's look at that instead of like what you think about what that guy just said over there that has nothing to do with us over here and fight about that, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, and, and you know, with that, beautiful. like to have those conversations, it takes a degree of emotional intelligence that, that you can mm. be passionate about something, but like that passion doesn't have to overtake the conversation or again, you don't have to be right on it. And sometimes like mm -hmm. being able to, that a lot of people have these emotions that they hold on to and they build up and like it never has this expression outwardly of conversation. It's more so just like focal point, like I'm mad about this. Here's, here's this thing where sometimes with these conversations, especially if you can go in, cool, calm, collected, or you have that emotional intelligence that you can be that sounding board for somebody, like you might offer a different lens of perception for them that they hadn't considered before. I literally just had this over the weekend. Damn, um, I went and uh, like was going through a, a new course um, that I signed up for and like using that to study while somebody else was studying. Um, and we started watching uh, Joe Rogan stand up triggered. And uh they said to me they're like i only made it five minutes into this and like i got so mad i had to like stop it and i was like okay like we're gonna watch this again but like tell me what i want you to actually listen to what he's saying like yeah. give me like tell me like what gets you so angry you have to turn it off but like actually listen to him not just the perception of like uh like you know he's this like white man that hunts and everything like that. I was like, just listen to him as a comedian because like, he's like my opinion, like fairly opinionated and like balanced. Like he has opinions, but he's pretty balanced and open to conversation. You can just tell that by the variety of guests he's had on. And so like we get to that five minute marker and, um, and it's uh, like, it, it's the part where basically he's talking about the person that broke into the white house. And was like running around there and what like the trigger point was that in the joke a woman shouldn't have been guarding the front door of the white house unlocked alone and so like that was the whole bit of and it was like hey the rest of it's funny like we just made it through this whole like 15 20 minute spiel of it you've been laughing the whole time but it's only because i was here to be like hey it's just that like can move forward and you actually heard the rest of it and like heard it out in its entirety and like it revealed a little bit like hey yeah this is kind of fun you know but, yeah, yeah, but sometimes it takes that like external external sounding board or just like another person to get you out of your head and get you out of like that that place that you've built up in your mind where like you're not you're not as open to receive information or like hear something in its entirety. 
by all means, at the end of that, if they would have had the same opinion, be like, that's fine. Like you heard it out. That's, that's mm-hmm. all I need you to do. And it's like, listen, talk bro. me through that. Like, this is why I feel like this way skill. Like, okay. We, we have different thoughts on it, but like, I'm not going to try to convince you that you're wrong or anything, but I think sometimes like twofold of it, that, that we can get so into like the like-mindedness that we, it's such a safe place that we never have that willingness to step outside of it. I think that's like mm-hmm. Lou with you going to the presentation this weekend, like that's exactly that. There's, there's a connector of both these people are at a very, very high level, very, very intelligent in fitness that have a disagreement on something. And it's just, hey, here's exposure to any of this audience that's watching it. Like there's not a right or wrong. It's like, here's here's an approach. Here's an approach. Both have got great results for people. It's just like, which one do you more align with or like, or even better if you can hear it and you're like, okay, here's whenever I would use this side. Here's whenever I would use this side. Combine yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. cherry pick all things and um, apply them like to your practice, like be, be open enough to hear all these resources and like the other side of it. And, you know, this gets a little bit more like life and stuff. Um, but like the other side of it is it scares me way more than like whenever I hear crazy shit that I'm like, Oh, that's crazy shit. I'm not scared by that because very easily, like I can hear that and like, well, here's a list of things that I disagree on. What scares me more is whenever, like, the suppression of those thoughts. Uh, Mm. Uh, Look at that. Whenever they're, whenever it's not allowed to be, like, whenever it is restricted, where you can't hear those thoughts, like, you can't have that, like, internal checklist of, like, okay, I disagree on these things. Like, whatever the person was presenting, whatever the practice is, whatever the thought is, like, here is it in its entirety. Like it's open and available. I can hear this. I'm like, yeah, I don't, do, I don't agree with that. You sound batshit crazy. Like very, very easily that's put to sleep whenever it's, it's put into a public forum that is allowed to be understood. Whereas whenever these things, like whenever something is suppressed or restricted, that it, it starts gaining momentum and a following just through the application of that. Like we see it through the, like through history of like burning books or like suppression of speakers on campus on university campuses or like even with social media that there's like suppression of things whereas like the i mean we're we all live in the u.s like our first amendment is um freedom of speech and that's through so many mediums and there's a reason that like we are the like only ones with freedom of speech built into our constitution that like that's how much we value it and and i think like sometimes that can be lost on on us absolutely or underappreciated of what that truly means it doesn't just mean you get to hear the things that you want to hear it means that uh it things that you don't want to hear things that you don't agree with are allowed to have conversations about the like blue you talk about like wanting to bring on communists which is fantastic. Like I, I disagree with quite a few of the like application of like, of yeah, had like instances like all of history it, for the most part. Been applied. I mean, but, uh, just look at history. Like, and look who's preaching for it. Everyone whose parents left communism and come to America, and you just in a. Co- and was, this is an interesting. This is, this is not the really setting. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> switch it up. You know, with like being able to have those conversations, that there's been points in time where you will go to jail for having those, con- like even to have such open conversations. And in a communist country, you would go to jail for even having such a debate. Yeah. So, in, you know, and you know, like it, it's it's a mindset and mentality that goes into it that it's it's open to being that sounding board. It's open to having those discussions. It doesn't matter if it's in politics. It doesn't matter if it's in like education how you raise kids or fitness like it's that should go into all these mediums of how people approach and like their willingness to like expose themselves to different thought process because that's like growth forward in being able to hear different approaches but it also helps solidify like your stance on something yeah something you said much earlier that i was going to hop on is like the the 
getting out of your head with the conversation. Because if you stay in your head, it's not really, it's, it's with this only. So you're only going to be, get, it can get you crazy. You know, when you step out of that is when you can get true answers too. You know, like really back and forth with another human. Otherwise, you're just going to stay up here with it and then what? You know, like I think you get great answers with yourself, but about yourself. When it comes to like other things that other humans have to be involved in, like fitness or science or anything that's not involved with only the world within you, then yeah, go talk about it, go discuss it. You know, I think it's a little different though when people are like, um, excuse me, tarot reader, what does the moon say today? I have to see how I'm gonna feel. That's a little different to me. But if it's like, yo, hey, how do you think about this? Cause I'm bouncing that around my head. Cause if you only keep it in your head, you're only gonna find out what you're you're figuring out, you know? Yeah. It's, it opens that conversation, gets people out of their head, but it's also very comforting for people to only hear what they want. So like you said too, it's growth. That's what people are not understanding. When you stifle speech, when you stifle ideas, you're stifling not just anyone's growth or collective growth, you're stifling your own growth yourself. to challenge your ideas, to challenge yourself. Cause that's how do you grow is through stress, through a challenge. That's anything you adapt to it and you grow, you know? So you're not just gonna grow if you pick one note. Like if I, like I'm very, in with pre-scripting honestly shallow could probably tomorrow say something i'm like yeah that's it that's it you know i'm not <laughs> i'm very I'm aware of this way yeah, i'm very aware of myself but being said that's why i still went and go pick up pat davidson's book and learn that and i learned so much from that like and then you still i still go to nasm for some of my learning stuff the difference is still nasm is very much so in their ways and it's tough to learn from people like that i like to be yelled at sometimes you know so it's like it's cool to get that to have that understanding and that's what's gonna has helped me grow in the business is not just sticking with just nasm like you know ace i don't even want to talk to you because you're an ace fitness you're not with nasm you know what i mean or like wait you only follow pat davidson and not prescript go i mean i'm kind of like that with prescript though. <laughs> i was just gonna say though i think that's a really big tip to any coaches who may be <laughs> listening or anybody who's like getting into it because that's like something that i think helped me grow to like even be able to reach out and have these conversations with more people is just being that way and like listening to mind pump and listening to who they suggest who they don't suggest and going over there finding that it just gives you like you said just multiple different ways to look at things and also i don't know if you guys do this but i would be in podcast in the car i swear i'm, I'm oh, in have podcast, to. talking back to it yeah <laughs> oh like that oh i thought yeah, you were just listening talking back to it dude yeah, yeah. oh man i'm i'm talking back <laughs> to my own point of view everything i don't know it just it helps like he, he pauses it like you know thanks for asking i literally, this. I, literally <laughs> I appreciate it sal now let me give you my response this is my view <laughs> but i mean i mean Yo. really though like i did the exact same thing like as a young trainer listening to mind pump did the exact same thing. When they got into their Q and A's, I'd pause it and I'd be like, okay, this is how That's I would I answer it. Yes. Let me unpause yep. and hear them. And it's like, yep, this lines up, this lines up. Be like, oh, disagree on this. Or like they went deeper or like in a different direction than I was even going to take it. So like, honestly, like it, it sounds funny as shit, but I did the exact Dude, same thing. Helps. And I think it's that Telling good you. practice whenever you don't get to regularly have those conversations you, because now it's like, I'm having a conversation with myself, but like I'm, I'm creating the sounding board. Dude, yeah. that uh, I'm going to start doing works. that now. Like yeah, you guys just works, hooked me up man. with some, with some, cause I'm thinking like, that's how you get the thoughts rolling. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. it's like when you go to like read it, like when, when I go to read a book now, it's not just reading a book to read a book. It's like, all right, what am I looking to get out of this chapter from this page from, you know? And it's like, if I don't get anything, it's like, you probably just read and, and we're somewhere else though. Cause same mm -hmm. thing. If you're listening to a podcast and you're like, all right, let me take some points. What am I trying to get out? You know, like anything, if you actually yeah, get the right. attention and focus into it. And that's probably why you're excelling at what you're doing as well to have the, cause I meant like we just talked on earlier about hopping in the prescript labs. Like when you would start talking, I'm like, I didn't know who you were, you know, I was in shallow Killian. And then you hop on. I'm like, he's, he's not, he's not me. Like, he's not, he doesn't sound like any of these people. He's, he's, who is this? he was this guy. Like, he knows everything. You know, like, like you knew you stuff. you knew, you knew your stuff. You know what I mean? So it's like obvious now I didn't know you did this, but you saying you would do stuff like that, like figure out the conversation with yourself. It's like, Oh yeah, duh. Makes sense. Look what he, look how he, when he hops on a prescript lab, it's like, hey, this guy's got to have done this before. Where'd he come from? You know? So it's, it's, def it's obviously worked phenomenal stuff yeah you'll have to have to yeah. give that a try let us know how it goes it's like a, it, it's, it, it works yeah 
It's uh, kind of I usually do it with like angry things. I usually do that with like yeah, things like, like that. You fucking I'm sitting in my apartment like, how are you talking about? How could you think that? You know. So I gotta try, I gotta try it the opposite way, where it's like, uh, where it's a learning experience, not just me screaming in my apartment by myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's definitely different. It's weird to take yourself out of it. Because I'll notice, like, sometimes I'll be driving, and I'll be like, damn, what were they just talking about? You know, like, you'll just do that sometimes. You're like, wait, hold on. Let me bring it back. And that's, like, where I picked that up on. Um, that's funny that you do that, too. The, the worst is, like, I've had this, too, on long trips because I just load up podcasts. Mm-hmm. Is whenever you get so into it, you're like, oh, these are these are good thoughts. Like, and then I'm having to go between the podcast and notes and just like go notes, back and yep. forth. And like, You're like, wait, hold, hold on, on, hold on. Let me get this back. I literally have like in my notes, I have podcast learns, and I just have a bunch of different podcasts I listen yeah. to, and I'll just go in there and just voice over something real quick, and then it boom, it's right there. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool too that you brought up Mind Pump because I'm like, yes, when I first got into fitness, that's why I started following. I'm on Dude, a good I, path. Yeah. I'm on a good path. Yeah, that's how I found Thayer too. <laughs> uh, that's how I found Shallow as well. That same interview you were talking about earlier, uh, and then all those videos they dropped on. Was it like some, there was some shoulder stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it was like a shoulder series they did together. Uh, that put me the on hips to him. One, and then yeah. I all, yeah, the hips one. I just went way back into his old like muscle doc YouTube. and like Yeah, we did like that. the short hair and stuff. The yeah. short hair. Yeah, the bust. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you want to hear, you want to hear a quick like personal like hilarious. It's hilarious. This is how much, this is how yep. wild life is, right? Mm-hmm. I think it was two years ago. Yep. Two years ago, right? Because I've been in there a year. It was about a year and a half before COVID. Couple months mm-hmm. before COVID, it has to be two years ago, right? I'm at an event. I'm not going to name the event because I don't drive with the person. And in New York, you can guess what it is. Mm-hmm. And I see yeah, I at the time, it's just a muscle doc. I couldn't even go up to him to say hello. That's how <laughs> like, like starstruck I was because I was so into him. Because to me, when I first got to fitness, it was like geeky people that I didn't drive with. Mm-hmm. Like I can't even, I couldn't even sit down and chat with you right now. Forget learn. And then I find prescripts. I'm like, these are my guys. Beard, screaming, cursing. This is my people. That's what it, I was it, gravitated toward. Yeah, it was like yeah. you're, you're learning from like just jacked people that are very intelligent. So it's like, yeah, this is my style. You know, not that I was very, not that I'm intelligent, but, you know, some size. So like I couldn't even say hello to the guy. Now it's like, now I look back at that time and I'm like, it's so wild how much time changed. In like the sense, even with growth of yourself that like mm-hmm. I it was just like, oh. Cause I was with a girlfriend at the time. Like, do you know who that is? Um, she didn't know who she was. She didn't know who he was. So that ever, that, <laughs> yeah. that that relationship Peace. ended really quick. You're okay, out of we here. we broke up like a week later, and she thought it was something else. But really, it's all because she didn't you know. Just who sat at, you was. sat at home the whole time, like this bitch. Uh, the second she didn't know who he was, I was like, "This is a waste of a well, ticket." Peace. Oh my god. <laughs> god. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. It's oh, it's so dope, and and you know what. The internet is what got me past yeah, it because I, I we became friends over that. You know, driving through the labs, me just doing what I do, and then shouting me out that one time on RX, and then it was just mm-hmm. off to the races. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was fuck- so hyped when I heard that. I remember, like, me and you were already, like, partnered up, and I was sitting weird. there one day <laughs> driving. I'm like, I'm like, Lou, did you hear that shit, dude? <laughs> yeah. I was like, bro. Yeah, it was weird. Oh, that's amazing. I guess, like, I mean, the takeaway from this all for me is just, like, you got to search, you know, it kind of starts with like, you know, going for the people you do, you do want to have these conversations with, right. And then expanding upon that. And then from there, growing it into, you know, looking at things from the different views, whether you listen or read things that have opposing views or whatever, it's just all growth minded in that aspect of just going forward. And I, you see that with us, just everybody kind of in the prescript family that I talk to on a regular basis, it's just always driving forward, driving forward, Mm -hmm. driving forward. That's what we got to keep doing. I love it. So Thayer, before we end it this today, I need to know how's training going for you right now? Because if you guys don't know, this man, he's a strong motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> he's strong. He's strong. So I, I need to hear how training is going. Uh, then I got another. It's going pretty well. Right um, like it's it's consistent. I'll say that. Like it's it's going That's consistent. Because so... um, yeah, like my my training. I mean, it's it's pretty much just my Instagram is just training logs and every now and then the blue suited gentlemen show up. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's four strength days and then, um, a five or six, depending on the week, like creative day. And so it's like, there's some diversity in, in it where you might see like this past week I had three, 
like as a accessory lift, three sets of 10 on the safety squat bar, which was death. Um, <laughs> worst bar ever. Yeah. Worst bar ever. Just wants to crush your <laughs> um, But yeah, it's going, it's going pretty well. Like um, where I'm at right now, it's, it's where I like to be on my strength training is like heavier weights, lower reps, yep. like that cardio bullshit is. You're like in that, in, yeah, you're in that cycle of training right now where you're kind of just like, yes, I get to just kind of grip. Exactly. <laughs> so like there, there's that and it just, it helps facilitate that like creative day where it's now I can go do like shit that, that isn't going to show up in my program, but it like helps facilitate it. Where like, okay, here's all the things we focused on, like during these four, like, this is the other stuff I want to do. These are like the other movements. Like Lou got introduced in, uh, at DMV, got introduced to the SS pendulum hold. That was, that was oh, wild, oh. dude. That was wild. And it's, you know, it was so dope about it too, the fact that I skate and it was still such a challenge because it was so different. Mm -hmm. That you undulating think, yeah, way, be a that undulating uh, load is amazing and it's simple i've wanted to try that ever since i've seen you post that i was like damn that looks so fun to try i was like oh it looks that so was, like i was so happy when you brought that out because i i was like yeah, that's cool. I, I mean i think i that was that day two when i was just, yeah mm. yeah day two we never uh, day, <laughs> day two was a little rough for me you know what I mean? so yeah, when you put i could i was barely there when you pulled that out i was like oh i'm so happy because i forgot yeah, about yeah. seeing this you know yeah. yeah, that thing was so – all that stuff you do. And that's just uh, – because I was just re-listening to the podcast we had about it, and you are consistent because you've been doing the four days with, like, the two one or two days to explore things, working with the mace, the on it mace, and checking for stability and all those phenomenal things, you know. And, it's, and it also shows a great way that you can be in the gym without having to go nuts. You know what I mean? Like, some people – it's like, oh, I got to go to the gym today, and I got to – and that's another thing I got out of what you said last time was like, yo, make it more enjoyable. You know what I mean? Don't yeah. make the gym something to not like to do. Make it more enjoyable. Even if you love going to the gym and just playing basketball there. Better than sitting on your couch playing basketball for NBA 2K, you know? So it's like, make it more enjoyable. And it's dope that you leave yourself that room to do such. Just explore things, try different things. Yeah, and, and like a lot of the, like, honestly, a lot of little of the same, like life things I have come through like are applied to the gym but they expand out to other places like uh walk when you must sprint when you can like hey if you're having a shitty day like do what you can and like get it done and whenever you have good days like you don't have to run off program and like try to max but like hey let's you know let's play with this a little bit like we can go a little bit harder we can go a little bit faster or um like exhaust the body settle the mind like my it, like i said it's chaos up here so having that physical outlet to be able to like exhaust myself um mm -hmm. settles things a bit like it helps me sleep at night you know yeah without a doubt and that that same you have with uh walk sprint when you can walk on your bus that helps me personally so much when i'll i'll really think about some days when i'm like i feel like death and i'm like all right Lou, so don't go to the gym and do all this don't go to this program don't do everything do what you can so like it could be just show up to the gym today and some of those days happen to be the best lifts yeah. lifts you know what i mean mm -hmm. or like all right you know what we'll do is we'll settle on the gym we'll go tomorrow we'll take a day but like let's get to a little extra client stuff today you know like it, i having that idea instead of because it was the same with me and then i'll beat myself up analyst the paralysis where i just lay in bed watching seinfeld all day instead of doing anything at all where it's like because all i was thinking about was doing was having a run that it scared me into not even moving period not even starting instead of just walking instead yeah and so that's really personally helped me out a lot and man like you you kind of bring it to the point of like go like instead of not doing it like doing it and figuring it out from there like that's that's part of where it came from was like you don't know you don't know how it's going to be till you put yourself in that arena to like figure it out that like um like everything feels like shit like i'm gonna walk i'm gonna take it a little bit slower or like I mean, again, it's not the smartest, so don't take much of the advice that I say, but like there was a time where like I had I had a pretty bad like SI thing going on and it was a squat day and I was like, eh, I don't know how this is going to go, but like started putting weight on and what it did, it challenged me to stay in position. Like my margin of error was so much smaller that I had to be on where it's like, hey, figure it the fuck out or you're going to get hurt. And yeah, and so it's like, 
Oh, guess what? Hardest brace that I've had in months today. We're not. Yeah. yeah. The <laughs> yeah. But, and it's you know, you, phenomenal. You don't know until you like, until you allow yourself the opportunity to figure it out. And like, it's, it's okay to like, it's not failure in that mindset of like, it's not failing to walk. I'm still doing something, but I don't know where I need to be, where that challenge is, unless I, you know, unless I expose myself to it. Um, I'm going to just, at some point, you guys just need to stop me because like one of, one of the other like sayings I've been using more and more and like anybody that has had a conversation with me, I've probably brought this up at some point. So I, I apologize to them. Um, But, (laughs) but like it's, I think it's because I've been having it so much more, honestly, that it comes to mind, but it's be an active participant of your life because nobody else can live it for you. And so like, have like, honestly, though, like so many times I've had to have that conversation. Like, hold on a second. I need to. Hold on. Let me get some, <laughs> I can repeat it if you need here. This, 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 this. He just on. blew his you mind. Can if you want to. Yeah, that just blew <laughs> my mind. That's just, this deserves, hold on. I need this. Come on now. Don't, don't do this to me. Are we going to go? There's that barbell oh poetry for you. Yeah, that was amazing. Dude, amazing. I can't wait to write that book for you and then take all the proceeds and credit. I can't wait for you. <laughs> just on the front. Oh yes. Don't worry. I'll throw, I'll throw up a foundation for you. Don't worry. Oh, They're your foundation, man. but I'm taking all the money. Forward, man. That's all it. Right. Love your own book. <laughs> I didn't write any of this. It's that all was, plagiarism. Here's the forward. I was trying to get some cheering going and stuff because that was that was well deserved. Sure. God, no, man. but that is a dope Let's... thing. That is a dope thing to be your own participant. Because yeah. like, literally, who's gonna write your story? Who the f- who's gonna write your story, man? Yeah, exactly. Like That's you know, like... so many like it's very. It's easy to find an excuse if you're looking for an excuse. You're always gonna find it. But, but the thing is, like, like no, no matter if it's like what you want in your education, no matter if it's like searching out opportunities, even like dating, like it's not just going to happen for you. Like you have to be an active participant. You, you have to take steps to put yourself in situations where it's even a possibility. Gotta be dateable. Like no, no you matter, be dateable. no matter what it is, like you have to do it because nobody else is going to do it for you. Like nobody's showing up yeah. to your door and like, Hey, here's all your hopes and dreams. Well, you couldn't make you a know. phone call. And take some money out of your bank and make an exchange, but that's like the least effort you could do. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no. That's like the least amount of effort you could do into dating. So I guess it's like it'd be it's cheap. Like, it's, 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 it's like it's like if you code. it's like if you called NASM and you were like, "Yo, I'll, I'll pay you, you know, five hundred dollars for a cert." For like, sure. Same. same thing. So it's like you want to <laughs> cheat yourself. <laughs> you want this to last. You know what I mean? Or you want it to be quick? Uh, it's it. route you want to go it. in life. You know what I mean? No, that's that's just awesome though, because it shows there's there's a lot of a lot going on, but you're also able to distill it down to like what you want that way too, you know. And I think that's very powerful to be able to do, like you said, like break it down, like what do you want from life, and then from there you're able to figure out like what can you do, whether it's your walking day or your running day on a daily basis of like this is at least still making me go toward what I want. So I love that you brought that up that way. You know, next thing I have also to ask, the oh, go, ahead. Go, go ahead. No, no I was gonna say real quick. Also, with those walking days, those walking days where you'll find out some things you want to do in life. Because a lot of times, yes. like my little brother's dealing with this a little bit. It's like, what do I truly want to do with life? It's like, go find out. If you don't love, if you don't like this office job you got right now, go find out. You know what I mean? And it's not just saying you have to quit and do all that stuff, but it's like in the weekend instead of doing this, go find out. You know what I mean? Instead of staring at the screen or doing something you know you enjoy doing, but you want to do other things, go find out. You know, so those could be those walking. Not every day you wake up with that motivation to go find out, but it, literally a walking day could be you walking out in your neighborhood and going to find something you enjoy. Mm-hmm. You know, well, so it's, that's the perfect way to look at it. So there, if you could, uh, if you could have your own gym, right? You own your own gym. You could have anybody, any three people come train there, dead or alive. Who is who's coming? Um, well, first off, I would never want to own my own gym. It seems like a pain in the ass. <laughs> okay, not, yeah, not like commercial, not that, like that, but your own also, training facility where you're just like, like, like train. We we own the we own the gym. There we go. Three people yes, that are allowed to come work out. Hey, do you want to own a boat or do you want to be friends with somebody? Like I want to be friends. That's yeah, yeah. Friends owning boats. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> yep. Let's see. So if I could train with any three people, dead or alive. Um, 
do they have to be fitness people? No, that's okay. Do they that train though? Wait, do yes. they train though? It doesn't fucking matter. No. <laughs> I'll lift weights Ooh, and just you're listen. gonna make them. I'll lift weights and listen to them. Yes. <laughs> so you well, you see what yeah, you just that's what I'm you, saying. You, I would have Bill Bill Nye's one of mine, because I think having him in the gym <laughs> would be like super <laughs> sick for some reason, dog. Super smart, you never know. I learn a lot. Oh just my second. god. But go ahead, um, there. <laughs> Well, like, okay, I'm I'm gonna go away from uh, I'll go away from um, just like typical fitness people because like that's yeah that's easier. Um, I know, I know who you're gonna say. Who you're gonna say. I'm gonna write down the initials in my phone, okay. and if All I'm right. right, if I'm right, really right. quick, okay. really quick, because I think I have a feeling. All right, go ahead. Okay, so um, it's written down. Hands off. Hands off. Go ahead. <laughs> hands gonna be here the whole time. So the three, <laughs> I'll at least throw one of them for a loop for you. Um, none of them that I know were trainers, but like right now, where my mindset is, my answer could also be very different tomorrow. So take that with a grain of salt. Yep. Um, let's go, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, oh, what side? He got it. He got what it. He got side? It. Uh, he gets it. And JFK. Rip. Oh. There we go. Hey, I got, I got the I got it. I, got it. I, got it. I, I, I have to have that conversation. <laughs> I would love to work out with JFK just so we could smash together afterwards <laughs> in the White House sign. <laughs> you know what the gym in the White House would be like? And then Marilyn Manson cup by I me. Mean, Marilyn, Marilyn Manson. Or, that got uh, weird. Yeah. Marilyn Monroe Marilyn Monroe. shows up. Marilyn Monroe. Teddy Roosevelt would have been a good time. Like, Teddy Roe, you'd, you'd have to fight. With you, though. You, yeah, yo, yeah, you'd been up fighting bears together. <laughs> I like the Oval Office. Definitely say or two there would definitely yeah. be out there fighting bear. Yeah, he'd so. bring the bear. Like, yeah. I figured. Yeah, you know what I mean? what we're going to do. This. Come on, man. Go on, on, Prez. This is, this is training. That's Dude, that's training. amazing. I knew so, it. I knew so, you'd So let me hear why real quick um, before we end it with uh, each person. So with, uh, like, Poe's work, I – so, like, just kind of, like, my – life philosophy of stuff like poe is very very like dark depressed and like the and like has has that like almost can be taken as a negative view on life but like i connect with it because like i like emotions set on a spectrum and and my approach is like there there's an you don't get the extremes of joy without accepting the extremes of sadness and because like we we can't we can't just have like everything can't be all good or all happy like there has there's going to be that backswing throughout life and and in not like i mean to you know to a different conversation a little bit but like same thing with like depression like there there's an acceptance of depression that it's not something that can be defeated or like that that you're going to fight against or like you're going to kill it like in an acceptance of like hey this is a time right now and how i'm feeling i accept that but i know there's going to be another time where like i'm not to this state or not to this degree but it's that acceptance of an emotional spectrum that to me allows an enjoyability of both um because it's kind of like like night and day like the reason we appreciate the sun is because we get the moon the reason we yeah. like yeah. the warmth is because we know what the fuck cold feels like. Um, but like understanding <laughs> that. And so I have an appreciation for his writing because I see the sides of that of like, this is like, his writing is a bit more of what people want to avoid or want to steer, steer clear of where like I'll lean into it a little bit. Um, I mean, I have, plus I have uh some of his words tattooed on me. So I feel like I owe it to the man. Um, Cause like the, like the quote I have is uh, words have no power to impress the mind without the exquisite horror of their reality. Because like words are made up mouth movements. We, you know, we put value to those words depending on how we feel about them or how they expose us. And so like, fuck, I'll, I'll do some squats and let this man say poems to me. Like that'd be a good time. Hell yeah. That is a great that idea. That would be. That would be. That is great. Like as bonus. you're as you're going into a hole with like three fifteen on your back for like the you know for you it's like the eighth or ninth rep, and he's just <laughs> reciting some poetry in your ear. Yeah, that would be like. 
just like whisper. That'd be like Corey Taylor screaming Slipknot. Exactly. Like, it's, it's, like I have, I use a little yeah, t- hashtag that says uh, play violence because that's like yeah. whether it's over the radio <laughs> on hard sets or it's just like up here, but that'd be like just practical yeah. well, application. Just, just him re- watching violence to me, sir. Well, watching your, your Instagram is like, you could tell that it's, I, at least I feel like it's like in your head, you're just like, but you're so just like, I'm going to go up to this barbell. Or I'm going to lift it off the ground. I'm going to put it back down. Like, that's how you approach it. Like, you could tell upstairs, you're just like, Rrr. and it's like, duh, duh, lift it up, put it down. Oh, Especially the very fair, ones. Very fair. The setup. Yeah, the whole yeah, thing. See, the, the I love setup, the deadlift yeah. one because it's always from like a little bit far back. You got dogs in the background. Yeah, yeah I mean, he just walks up so yeah, casually. He has dogs that walk yeah. around oh. your gym, dude. Yeah, like Steve, <laughs> yeah. Steve the Mastiff, he's almost 200 pounds. It's a big ass dog. Like, so, Bro, when I come you know, visit, I'm going to take him from a ride around the town. But, you know, with that, like, I'm going to hop on. <laughs> like, it's, there's, um, with that, like, it, it is that mindset of, like, kind of the tunnel vision focus where it, it's not necessary. It doesn't, yeah. for me, it's not an outward expression of this. That it, It's very, very in my head in the focus with that. And I'll give you guys a little fun tip. So, on, like, hard lifts or whenever I'm trying to maintain that focus, I started naturally doing this and then, um, and then like realized that I do it. Uh, cause everybody has like natural ticks or like, you know, little slight mm-hmm. things that they do. So one that I noticed that I do on hard lifts is I'll snap. Like you'll see that in my deadlift videos. When I walk away, I'm snapping. I've noticed so that. Yeah. What it is that, though, like... it's almost like a dog clicker. So using it to oh. like, by putting an auditory to the like to the mental state it's getting me to focus on that in no distraction anywhere else that i hear that and it helps me retain that headspace but it's also being mindful of like with with the music with the snap like use it in a very very like small specific setting to maintain that is like a stimulus or it being useful but like just fun fact now. So if you see videos and doing that, that's why I'm doing it. That's why. Um, Watch the like let's see. a couple so months ago because he's so many. Three other people I said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we, had, we had JFK Poe, and then you had JFK. I forgot the middle yeah. guy. Uh, I thought Poe, JFK about and uh, Aristotle. Um, Aristotle, full throttle um, with Aristotle, like baby. Old philosophers. I just vibe very very well with old philosophers just in that thought process like um uh like aristotle uh plato um socrates like Mm -hmm. aristotle i like because he he was influenced by uh socrates as well and like like the the whole class of socrates like one of the founding philosophers or like one of the first Greek philosophers, the philosophers that came out of his school, um, like had similar thoughts and approaches, but also had different thoughts and approaches. So having somebody that like had that was influenced by, I think that'd be like the next generation would be interesting to like have that conversation. Um, I think it was like, I could have gone Socrates because I do vibe with him as well. Um, maybe I'd change it. Yeah, let's go, Socrates, because uh, he does. He does have the one, the quote about um, physical, like um, yeah. That, I forget the exact quote, but basically that like you it's a shame if right? um, man never knows his physical ability. Like through training, through performance, uh, it's used all over the internet. But like, great quote. Um, also, like two things that are real cool about him his approach to debate he never Message. gave answers and like yeah, i think only that shit's only funny ask questions as hell. what he would do he'd hear somebody present their topic their presentation their discussion and he'd just poke holes in it he's like this is wor- this is why this doesn't work this is why this doesn't work and so instead of ever forcing him to give an answer they would just have to defend the points that he poked and so He'd, he'd win debates, never actually giving answers. It's just like, hey, this is why this could be wrong. This And like to me, it just comes off as like, eh, I'm going to fuck with people because it's fun. Um, yeah. It's asking questions. You know, yeah. it's, that's what's yeah, so it's, dope about well, it. Well, and, why? Yeah, and like, I mean, you know, besides like whatever the like Greek stuff, history, 
true or not true with some of the weirder stuff. Um, but like, <laughs> man went out on his shield. Um, if you don't know, like he basically he was sentenced to death for corrupting the youth because um, because they didn't like the conversations and thoughts that he was presenting and like some of the stuff that was coming out in in the youth coming up of them challenging political thought. Um, they didn't like it. So they're like, OK, we sentence you to death. But like on the DL, like you can get banished to an island and like just live out there, but you don't get to be here anymore. It's like, nah, I'll take death. Nah. Yeah. And just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah. I'll drink that. that. Like, He's like, I'm, nah, I'm out. I'm not, nah, I'm out. But like, you know, they're like, yeah, he is a G. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like, hey, this is what you stand for. Like, here's your chance to stand for it. And he's like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And then, what about JFK? I got to know about JFK. Yeah, so what, yeah, uh, yeah, what intrigues you work out with Like, him? at least in some of, like, in his policies and his approach, like, he was very, very level headed. That we, I mean, right now we grow up in a political side, society that is very, very divided. And it's, you can only be this, you can only be, be that, like leans very hard on the two party model where like, I think he, he came up in a time and place that was like a bit more open to like, Hey, we're not these extremes. Like, yeah, I see both points. Like I like this part of it. I like this part of it, that it's, it's a lot more um, balanced. So being, you know, just like that's president wise, that's one of them that I look to that it's like, it'd be interesting to like see, to hear his thoughts on, on certain things or just to have that conversation. And, and during the time of um, like the, during the time he was in just everything that he was Amazing. having to deal with. Um, so being yeah. a, and the way he dealt with it too. Yeah. Being able to hear a like first, like in-person conversation about that all while, like we know now, like, a lot of things he was doing that wasn't necessarily publicized. One of which is like, he was in pain all the fucking time. Smoked heavy weed, son. And like heavy, weed. heavy weed smoker, JFK. Like, like it's interesting. Somebody that can perform at that level to be in that constant pain. Because like, if any, like anyone that's ever had chronic pain, like it, it's never gone. It's just like, it's always just in your ear. The volume is going to, fluctuate where it's like more present or less present but it's always there and like you don't you don't appreciate not being in pain until you've been in chronic pain and then you're like it's constant and like it's hard to envision an escape of that whenever you're in it and so just some you know just somebody that like could perform at that level um with like that much stress going on and having to run a country but also like has like is in this constant pain from this fitness side like that'd be fascinating to me probably help you get through a couple yeah. a couple extra reps huh yeah definitely no that's all he's awesome. definitely killed that's by the thing. cia for being one of the best presidents and shutting down Nor- operation northwoods where the cia was going to shoot down their own citizens <laughs> and blame it on cuba just to go to war but hey that's just a conspiracy apparently right let's find out more on uh, who we trust <laughs> next week <laughs> <laughs> oh man no this has been great there we're gonna have to have you uh back on here some more because these are just i mean honestly i didn't know where we were yeah, going with this conversation today i told lou i was like you can talk about coaching you can talk about whatever but i love the route that it, it went it's beautiful so, me myself definitely learned a lot and it was nice sitting back and just listening to the advice you had to give even if i heard it before it always sinks in yeah man me, like, so. like we talked about like you never else. know until you showed up like this is this part of it is like we showed up and oh conversation went where it did but um by all means it's like, amazing i'm i'm always down for it like i am more than happy to come in and like have conversations with you guys all you have to do is like let me know when it works for your schedule and i'll show up my jeezy say less we'll make we appreciate it you some more yes uh so everybody make sure you check out the show notes all of their stuff oh yeah there before i before i take us off of here go ahead and shout out um where people can find you instagram website all that good stuff okay, cool. sure um yeah the easiest place to find me would be my instagram uh there 2513 um with that it has in my bio the link to everything um my company is byproduct performance um dot com is the website so easy enough to follow uh just go there has my email has my website all the things 
go. Boom. And I'll make sure, like I said, everything will be down in the show notes. And just know that everybody is capable of being extreme. Thank you.